a lot of our parents on the panel do and a lot of the parents in the audience do when you come from a different culture to American to raise your children in American culture the best strategy is to follow your children with prayer that that is what I'm taking away is that um, there's no amount of planning there's no amount of preparation that you can make um, that will not be trumped by prayer. Like prayer is key in raising children and in building homes. So with that, let's give the, audi the panel a, a round of applause and take it away. Somebody give the Lord a round of applause. I know today is not the traditional Sunday. Uh, before we leave, we're going to hear the word from our general superintendent. But before we hear the word, I want us to rise and just commit in a few seconds, pray for our families, that God will bring healing and cure to our families, to our homes in Jesus' name. Let's open our mouth. You can't hear have, have this sort of conversation without saying, God, bring healing and cure. Healing and cure to our families. I want you to open your mouth and pray. You may say, I don't have a child, but when you pray for another, other people's family, you're praying for your own future, your own destiny. You're praying for your own children. You say, God, bring healing and cure. We've seen that we cannot neglect the word of God. We cannot neglect the injunctions of God to train up our children the way they should go. However, we know the enemy will wrestle, will fight to thwart the plan of God. But we know by the grace of God, we will prevail as a church, we will prevail in this generation in this generation, in this generation, our children will serve the Lord. Our children will serve the Lord. Give me the old-time religion. Give me the old-time religion. Give me the old-time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that old-time media. Are you ready? With Give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me, for it was good. Oh, it was good. Oh, it was good. So it's good enough for me. So give me that old, old time. time. So give me that old time religion. So give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. You know, God is no respecter of any generation of any sect of people, of any nation. The Bible says any nation that rejects God will be turned into hell. If God doesn't respect you or your families, he respects his word and respects what he's done. However, we know very well that when we will walk with God, like Joshua said, in my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Our children will give their lives to Christ. Our children will be role models. Our children will be the light. Our children will arise and shine. And we will arise and shine. Our children will be leaders in the way of God, in the name of Jesus. You know, before we leave today, you know, we, we've had a lot today. The conversation continues. But we just said we need to. And I, what we had today um, reflects the challenges and the battles that we are fighting in the society. What we go through in our families. I want you to say this to yourself. My children are not my enemy. I want, if you're a child, I want you to say, my father is not my enemy. I can't hear the children. I want you to say, my parents are not my enemy. Yeah, my friends, they mean well for me. I can't talk 
I will hear the younger ones say, my parents are not the enemy. My enemy, say it loudly, children, youth. I want you to say, my parents are not my enemies. They are my friends. Who in Christ Jesus have for you. So, come on board. And my father is living. I'm trying my best, right? People are smiling right there. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. So what will help you to relax in his presence? What you're taking from this place, I believe will be, will guide somebody. Will help somebody in taking discretionary measure in the society. Don't think we wasted time. We didn't waste time. Or do you think we wasted time doing this? I was enriched. I learned a lot. I wrote something, something to take home. And I trust God as I look at the scriptures, I'll be well guided. Even as I look at the situations and I pray for the church, I know what to pray about. Don't say, well, that one is their business. I, I don't not plan on having children. I don't think it is concerned. No, you know how to pray for the church. When the church, when we say pray for the church, we know what to pray about. And we're trusting God. This church will go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. At this point, we're going to listen to the choir from the Alpha location, and then we're going to listen to the pace setter for this ministry, in the name of our general president, Pastor W.F. Kumi. And he has a word for you. Relax, don't be in a hurry. You'll be richly blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen. Over to you, media. Please be seated. Just can't lie. No matter how it feels, 
No matter what the devil does, you know you got a word that has come from above. You know that you know that command. See, he just can't lie. No matter how it feels, no matter what the devil does, you know you got a word that has come from above. Thank you, Pastor. They just gave me a new title, Reverend. Praise the Lord. Are you there? Let the church say amen. Amen in your life today. And the promises of God will be fulfilled in every life, even today, in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the promises you have given us. And we all say amen to your promises in Jesus' name. Bless everyone today. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. And today, we come to the word of God, and we're still talking about full salvation. There are some things in full salvation many people do not think about. Peace, purity, power. It's all in the full salvation. Yes, there's salvation. And we're peace with God. And there's a greater, a brother, a deeper salvation, and we call that purity. There is another level, another height of that full salvation. We call it power. Peace. Purity, power. Put it this other way. Number one, in salvation, there is forgiveness. We come to the Lord. We plead with Him. We confess our sins to Him. He forgives us. Forgiveness is in that salvation. Number two, freedom. It sets us free in our heart, in our soul, 
in our spirit all the things were tied to before all the sin all the evil all the iniquity it sets us free and it breaks the yoke forgiveness freedom fire he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire that's the fire of the holy ghost and you pass through that fire everything of the world is burnt up everything of your past weakness is burnt up forgiveness freedom fire and that's why we're talking about the experience of full salvation today the experience of purity and peacefulness in a full salvation experience you have it evidence you show it expression you manifest it the experience of purity peacefulness in full salvation in Matthew chapter 5 reading from verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God the tribe of Reuben, Gad, Manasseh, they were not pure in heart. They had covetousness in their heart. They looked away from the promised land. And they looked at this one here. Let's stay here, Moses. Give us this land. Don't give us God's heritage. Give us this one. The large the purity of heart a pure heart does not have inordinate ambition a pure heart does not have that kind of covetousness and blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god lord lord saw the well watered ground just as you enter into sodom he didn't see god abraham saw god and abraham connected with god but the man lord what did he see only saw this one here his heart was not pure he didn't see god he only saw sodom sodom he wasn't pure in heart a heart that is full of abomination, a heart that is full of lust, a heart that is full of defilement, and you can only see women. Women, he turned this way, he only saw women, turned that way, only saw women, turned that way, only saw women, and everything he desired. Just women until he got, and you think about that 1,000 women wives and concubines in his palace that man did not have a pure heart the lord wants us to have a pure heart blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god look at verse 9 in verse 9 blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god when god purifies our heart he purifies our heart from anger and so we're not angry with anybody we just love love everyone the down and out the sinner, the seeker, the saint, the servant of God. We just want to be at peace with everybody. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The action or the act of Achan. It wasn't for peace. Whatever happens to the army of the children of God, of the children of Israel, many of them died. That was not his concern. His covetousness was his concern. What he will get was his concern. And so he stole because of 36 people died out of the camp of Israel. But is that man, a man that causes the death of other people, a man that caused the loss of the lives of other people unnecessarily? Is that a peacemaker? No, not at all. Your 
Look at the disciples surprised. And Jesus said, I'll be going to the cross. I will die. I will be slain by all these people who are defending religion. On the third day, I will rise again. They heard that and they were arguing among themselves who shall be the greatest, who is the highest, who is the most important. And Jesus said, Did you hear what I just told you now? I'll be dying, I'll be slain. And all they could think about was their carnal competition, high, greater than everyone. But the peace they ought to have among themselves, they were so self centered. They couldn't think of having peace among themselves. But blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. That the experience God is calling us into today. The experience of purity and peacefulness in full salvation. There are three things we're talking about. Number one is the priority of possessing a pure heart with peace. Number two, the promise and provision of pure heart. A, priority, a privilege. Number three, the pursuit of peacefulness with pure heart as peacemakers. We're looking at number one. Number one, the priority of possessing a pure heart with peace the three things we're looking at here number one is a peaceful heart in his peace number two is a purged heart by his propitiation number three is a pure heart at his Price. Uh, look at number one. Number one is the peaceful heart in his peace. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we came to know the Lord, when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, He gave us peace in our heart. He says, Your sins are forgiven. And God doesn't have anything against us anymore. We are justified. What's to be justified? Just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if I'd never sinned. He forgives. He forgets. He blots out all your iniquity just as if i had never sinned and so we have peace with god isaiah chapter 28 we're looking at verse 3. isaiah 28 verse 3 thou will keep him in perfect peace was my stage on thee thou will keep him in perfect peace he keeps us we have that initial peace and the peace is not decreasing we have increasing peace initial peace as we come to know the lord increasing peace as we walk with the lord in dwelt peace because the prince of peace lays inside us that the litmus test of the fact that we know him the prince of peace we love him the prince of peace he lives in us the prince of peace do you carry peace about your peace in your heart are you looking for you know peace and, and you are saying i want to get rid of this conflict and confusion in my mind 
as we come to the Lord initially, He gives us that peace and the peace continues on increases it tells us in, in philippians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 7 it says and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through jesus christ the peace of God that passes understanding. What kind of peace is that? They were Christ and the disciples were in the boat. And the sea was roaring. The waves were coming up. It's like we're going to be drowned. The disciples were anxious and worried. But Jesus was lying there he said on the pillow, calm, quiet, serene, no disturbance. And these worried people, that's what they always do. The anxious people, that's what they always do. And they went there, master, 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 don't you care that we're perish? They are thinking of death when the prince of life was right in the boat. Jesus had that peace. He was with them. He is in you. And it says the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. I want you to look at the first line there, the peace of God. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, we're pointing at something here. It says, those things which ye have heard and received and heard and seen. It says, in me, do it, and the God of peace. Verse 7, the peace of God. And verse 9, the God of peace shall be with you. In between verse 7 and verse 9, the peace of God that passes all understanding, being in you, and the God of peace, verse 9, reigning in you, in between that is verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us what to think about. It tells us what to meditate on. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a lovely and whatsoever things of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things the world is trying to change us and remodel us by what we see on the social media they control our thoughts. They try to steer our thoughts in the wrong direction. And many of the things we hear there, many of the things we read there, they are not true. And we're thinking of them. Many of the arts and the drama, whatever, they are not on it. That's what we're thinking about. Many of the things they are not pure. They glorify and bring to the limelight the relationship between men and women which are impure. They justify divorce and remarriage. Many of the pictures they paint there are pictures, they lift them up, they say, look at this man going on with this woman, they are not husband and wife, but they try to glamorize that. They make people think of that. Now minds can only think about one thing at a time, and the things they are presenting to us 
That's what we're thinking about. And it makes us not to have the peace of God and the God of peace. It says, if there be any good thing and any virtue, think on these things. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. In Romans chapter 16, verse 20, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the judge say amen to that. The God of peace. When you have the peace of God and you're indwelt by the God of peace, Satan, demons, and defilement, and all those powers of darkness will be under your feet. And today, you are going to trample on them in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two, we're talking about the purged heart by his propitiation. He purges our heart. He cleanses our heart. He washes white our heart. He makes our heart whiter than snow. You see, there are people that carry about old, old testimony. Forty years ago, I was saved. Tell me what's happening now. Forty years ago, I remember my heart was spurred. I couldn't think of those vile things I used to do. I couldn't think of those immoral things I used to have. Don't talk about 40 years. Tell me now. At this time, what's your spiritual stage? I couldn't hate anybody at that time. If I greeted them and they did not answer, I'll go to them. I'll say good morning. I remember I was born again. 1964. And there was somebody who had been going together to a particular church. In that church, all we did was drum, dance, burn candle, burn incense. I was actually, my position there was to be a drummer. And then I got the light of the gospel. I repented, I was saved. And I stopped going to a place I didn't even hear any iota of the good news, the glad tidings of salvation. That's a man, or very close, we're going together. And uh, when I decided I will be going to this place now, I have salvation, forgiveness, freedom, and the fire of the Holy Ghost. A man made me an enemy. And we're teaching in the same school. In the morning, when he's coming like that, I'll say good morning. He look at me like I was coming from the latrine. You will not answer me. I'll say good morning. You look down on me. And then I'll go to him. I will touch him and say, I was greeting you. Now, good morning. Okay, good morning. The second day, yeah, it did like that. The third day, like that. The following week, like that. But I never stopped because I was purged of anger, animosity, hatred, enmity. Everything went out of my heart. And then he began to change. And I invited him, I say, what's about going with me to the gospel church tomorrow? And he accepted, and he went with me, and he too became born again. Are you there? I said, he became born again. If when he was angry at me, I was angry at him, he'll never be born again. If when he held hatred and animosity in the heart, and I also did, I'll not be able to invite him, he'll not get saved. When you come to the Lord, He purges your heart. And there are people they do that because they are demanding something. And they think, if I'm angry at Him, 
If I show animosity to him, he will bend and give me what I want. My friends, if love does not give you what you are looking for, anger will never give you what you are looking for. In any case, why do you want something and you want to get it by force and get it by anger? He purges our heart. He will purge every one of us in Jesus' name. In Second Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. It says, If a man therefore purge himself from all these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet, ready, suitable, fit for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Anger will not prepare you for every good work. Animosity will not prepare you for every good work. Frowning face will not prepare you for every good work. I'm trying to push everybody down. I want to have my way. I want to have my will. And I push him down, push her down. That will not make me to be a doer of every good work. In Psalm 51, verse 7. Psalm 51, verse 7. Watch me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Look at number three here. Number three is the pure heart at his price. He paid for each all. All you need to do is come to him and say, Lord, you've given me peace at salvation. Now I need purity, pure heart that comes for sanctification. Psalm 24 verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Most people in the church, when they came in, they were thinking of heaven. They were praying about heaven. Lord, make me ready when the Lord shall come. Qualify me. Make me ready so that, Lord, I will see you when you come. That was our prayer. That was our passion. That was our pursuit. Many people now are forgotten going to heaven for themselves, for their children. All they want now for their children, they want this material success. They want you know, a good job. They want overseas training. They want everything. They want athlete position. In our own case, when we came to the Lord, the best thing we wanted for anybody around us is that they will get to heaven. And David the king, with all the position he had, the power, the authority he had on earth, the wealth and the riches he had on earth, he still wanted to know who will ascend to the hill of the Lord. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, he that has clean hands. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, not this or that, but both this and that. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. David, thank you for inspiration. But we cannot thank you for pollution. Look at David, clean hand, pure heart. He saw a woman which he shouldn't have seen. If he had gone to the battle at the time in the periods when kings go to battle, 
He said back at home, I don't mind strong here and there and think of many things you should not be thinking about. When she saw the woman in her heart, her heart was already, his heart was already defiled. Go bring that woman, King King David, the one who wrote, He that has clean hands and a pure heart. And he brought the woman, defiled himself with the woman, and to cover up. Many people do things to cover up, to shut the preacher up. I know the preacher has this knowledge, this knowledge. And I know he might talk about what he knows, and to shut him up, they act like this and act like that. And he used his hand, and he wrote a letter to Joab. When this man gets to you, put him in the hottest place of the battle. After you've done that, retreat, leave him alone. I want him to die. And Joab did not ask any question. Sir, why would you want an innocent man to die? Do what I told you, we need to cover up this deal. What spiritual stage was David in at that time? What was his stage of heart at that time? Well, you know the story. If David had died in that condition, God is no respecter of persons. That man would have gone to the other side, would have gone to hellfire, to live there, to suffer there, to be tormented there forever and ever and ever without end. But thank God, thank God, he said, Lord, push me, push me, push me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Unfortunately, there are people who have position who have work and they concentrate on the work they concentrate on activity and when it comes time to pray they don't have any time to pray they continue in that defiled hand and defiled heart and if you die walking 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 without having restoration of salvation if you die in that condition you go to hell <laughs> He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, and who has not sworn deceitfully. Well, David could have sworn deceitfully. Nathan said, Hear this, hear this, hear this. And David said, Whoever has done that must die. And Nathan pointed at him, thou art the man. You know, other people today, they will say, no, no. Me? Could I have done that? No. And then they will say, I swear to God Almighty, you compound your problem when you swear deceitfully. But you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, that's right, I'm sorry, I've done that. Purge me. Purify me. Change my life. That's what brings you to the possession of a pure heart. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two is the promise and the provision of pure heart that becomes our privilege. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The, the Lord Jesus did not say, everyone blessed. In the loving Christ, everyone blessed. Those who are speaking at heaven, blessed. 
those who are crucifying Christ for the second time again are blessed. Those who are living in open sin, flagrant sin, everyone blessed. No, that, that will not be true. And the people came to Christ and we know thou art true. And you declare the way of God and the word of God in all truthfulness. And in the truthfulness of Christ, he said, Blessed at the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The promise and the provision of pure heart, which is now a privilege. <laughs> Look at three things here. Number one, the persons with pure heart in the past. Number two, the promise of pure heart for his people. Number three, the provision of pure heart at present. Look at number one. The people who had pure heart before we came into the kingdom. You remember Enoch? He walked with God. And God took him not to see death. And that man saw the Lord. He had pure heart. You remember Isaiah? Isaiah said, Order your house, put everything or everything in order because you will die. At the face of death, that man turned and said, God, I need to do some other things before I come over. Coming over, not a problem, not a challenge. I'd like to come, but I want to accomplish this, this, and this. And he said, I have walked before you with a perfect heart. That man was pure. Daniel. This, uh, the people said, those other presidents and competitors, they said, you'll not find anything against this man. He was faultless. And Paul the Apostle, how holily and justly and unblameably I behaved myself before God and before you all. It's, it's, it's a little bit difficult. People can do it, but it's difficult to lie against a man that is never alone. He turned this way, Silas was with him. He turned this way, Timothy was with him. He turned the other way, and you have Epaphroditus with him. Everywhere he went, there were people with him. Can anybody lie against that man? <laughs> He's a preacher. He's an apostle, but his hands are not clean. His heart is not pure because he does this with women. He does this with money. Never. When you position yourself that you are not always in the secret that you know you can do anything you look here you look there and there's nobody around and you can play the fool for a little time that's dangerous those were people that had pure heart the lord established pure heart in you let the church say Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the promise of pure heart for his people. Look at Ezekiel chapter 36. We're reading from verse 25. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. That's the promise he has given us. And we can have the fulfillment of that promise from this day and every day until the final day. Verse 26. In verse 26, a new heart also will I give you. The old heart 
it's already influenced so permanently it's like you're walking on the field and you're walking on that path every time eventually you wear out all the grass there because you are walking on it every time everybody is walking on it every time <laughs> The old heart has been traversed and trampled by thoughts, by ideas, by habit, by action until it cannot be new anymore. Uh, you know that in our brain, in our mind, there is a past. You are thinking a particular way, and you think about that, and you think about that. Automatically, the thing is registered. Once you see that thing, the register is there. You just run for it. You just go for it. And once that idea comes, temptation, you already you are programmed to always go that direction. That's the old heart. And the old heart now, God will remove and he'll give us a new heart. A new heart also will I give you. You can tell whether you have the new heart or not. If you always lean towards the old propensity in your life, you don't have a new heart yet. If whatever you are always angry about, angry, 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 20, 30 years ago, when those things occur now, you're still angry, you don't have the new heart. If the defiling habits of the past that any time anybody comes and before they say too many words you're falling for them if you still have that old habit of falling into sin because of their personality because of their beauty because of this or that if you're still like that that's the old heart you don't have the new heart <laughs> a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit and i will put within you it will put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh <laughs> Look at number three here. Number three is the provision of pure heart at his at present. At present today. While we're still here in the world, the provision of a pure heart. It tells us in Acts chapter 15, we're reading from verse 9. Acts 15 verse 9 and he put no difference between us and them between us the apostles and the Jews and Cornelius he put no difference between us and them he put no difference between the apostles of that time and the apostles and the evangelists and the prophets and the preachers and the teachers of today the believers of that time jesus told them go and sin no more the apostles of those times they say you are witnesses and god also how holily unblameably and fully and just, uh, justly we have behaved ourselves among you that believe the preachers and the pastors of today what, what do they say? Oh, they say they are all sinners. They say nobody can be free from sin. And when they fight and beat their wife and get angry at home, and their wife said, my husband, but you are a preacher. And so what? Am I not a human being? Is a human being is not a saint of God. My wife, I saw something on your phone. Okay, what did you see? I saw that there is an illicit relationship going on between you and somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
Uh huh. What else? That's bad now. I do my own, go and do your own. The people who say they are believers today, they don't have this provision and this possession of a pure heart. But it says he put no difference between them of the earlier times and us purifying their hearts by faith purifying their hearts by faith today is your day why do you always forget your amen the lord will purify your heart the lord will support your heart that the old lifestyle of sinning from within to the external everything the lord will clear away look at second peter chapter one i'm reading from verse three in second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto uh, pertain unto godliness and unto uh, virtue he says through the knowledge of him that has called us he called us out of disgrace and he called us to glory and to virtue verse 4 in verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises those who walk ordinarily like all the people what those who live ordinarily like all the people live they don't know they have precious promise they don't know they have great promises of purity great promises of total freedom from sin they walk like every other person in fact there are you know many many so-called deeper life that i would have told them say the truth you are not deep alive you are shallow life because you live like others you talk like others you dress like others and you gossip like others and there's nothing that the shallow people out there are doing that you are not doing no, don't claim i am deep alive where you are sure where you are shallow life but he says he makes us to be partakers of the new of the divine nature today he will do it for us our lives will be different our thoughts will be different our lifestyle will be different we're coming to point number three now point number three is the pursuit of peacefulness with pure heart as peacemakers we're looking at matthew chapter 5 verse 9 in matthew chapter 5 verse 9 blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of god those are the children of God, the peacemakers. You remember when you were maybe if you're still in school, high school, university? You remember when two people are arguing, they're fighting? A speaks, B speaks. And things, temperature rising up, voice rising up and shaking shivering with anger rising up and you see those uh, other students that are on the side they say give it to him teach him a lesson let him know you're not the kind of person anybody can trample on give it to him that's what we were before salvation came but today how is it you see husband and wife having a reach what do you do how do you counsel the wife you see your husband did that to you your husband went that direction i, I as a woman i will never take that from any man 
If it comes to divorce, so be it. And you still cook for that man. You say spend your money, you go to market for that man. And you're still taking care of him. Okay, then. that's so why the man is treating you like that because you are dense, you are dummy, you are, you are so foolish that you cannot teach that. The men of today, if they are going to do what they ought to do, you must teach them the lesson they need to learn. You see, you are not a peacemaker and you cannot be called the child of God. <laughs> We didn't see you in church the other Sunday. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what happened because I know that you are my friend. <laughs> there was a little argument between me and my wife. <laughs> because of that, come to, I wanted to come to church. <laughs> but the woman locked me inside the room. <laughs> Stay there until I come, you learn your lessons. <laughs> and so, when she came back from church, what did you do? I knelt down and begged her. That's why you are in such a mess in your family. I'll never take that from any woman. If she wants to park and go back to her parents' house, so be it. Counselor, are you a peacemaker? In all things in life, all situations in life, we see people go this way and go that way. But the people who are real children of God, they are the people who are called peacemakers. Between husband and wife, he's a peacemaker. Between parents and children, he's a peacemaker. Between director and the, the between the foreman and the workers, he's a peacemaker. Between the prefect and the student union, is a peacemaker. Between neighbors and neighbors, he is a peacemaker. Those are the children of God. God said, Moses, enough is enough. These people, they have offended and rebelled these ten times. Leave me alone. I'll wipe them up and make you a greater nation than them. Pride would have, would have responded. Make me a greater nation. Thank you, Lord. And uh, anger in his because they also offend Moses too. You want to wipe them out, my enemies, my detractors, wipe them out and make me a greater nation. I want to see that. I wait to see that. The cursed people, they should be destroyed. You will not be a peacemaker if your heart is like that. Blessed are the peacemakers. Abraham, what happened to you the other day? My nephew, I brought along with me. He chose the better part of the land. And now I'm left for the rest. And you know, I brought him. The promise was given to me. And I was to possess that land. And this lot now, because of the read between him, his uh, herdsmen, and my herdsmen, I now said, choose whatever you wanted to do. He didn't say, ah, uh ah, -uh, daddy, how can I do that? He didn't say, uncle, oh, how can I do that? No, uh, whatever happens to the herdsmen, let it happen. But you will take the first choice. I don't even want to leave you. He just said, thank you, uncle, and chose the better part of the land. <laughs> Not long after, army enemies came and took Lot away and took everything he had away. And then Abraham 
had about it. When you hear of bad things happening to a junior fellow whom you brought out, whom you brought up, and now he's taking the lead and he's taking all the attention. My friends, what do you do? Abraham, the father of the faithful, Abraham, an example for those who say they live by faith today. The rally soldiers born in his house, trained in his house, rallied them together and went to fight against the enemies of the Lord. How about you? And he, and he brought all, he took away from Sodom, from Lord, brought everything back. And the king of Sodom said, Abraham, take the spoil. He said, no, I didn't, I didn't do it for gain. I didn't do it for money. I didn't do it for wealth. I will not touch a shoe lash it. I did it because I am a peacemaker. You're a believer today, where do you stand? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, pursuing peace with purposeful calling like our peacemaker. Number two, promoting peace as peaceable citizens among the people. Number three, partnership, partnering with peacemakers in the covenant of peace. Welcome to Christ. He lives in us. We live for him. Number one, pursuing peace with purposeful calling like our peacemaker. In Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 14, for he is our peace. He lives in us. He is our peace. He controls our thought, our talk, our action. He is our peace. The Lord who lives within you is the Prince of Peace. When somebody has done something against you, listen to the one who lives within you. He will not say, slap him back. Listen to the Prince of Peace, a Prince who rules and he reigns in you. He will not say, they threw that stone at you, your dodge did, fell to the ground, pick it up and give him his sense back. For he is our peace, who has made both one, and he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. If you're a man of peace, a woman of peace, you are not going to build up again what he has broken down. When Christ came, he broke down the middle wall of partition between one church and the other. This is where we stand. We have the best doctrine in time. That other church? No. He has broken down the middle wall of partition. Help them if they need help. Show them the way if they don't know the way, but we are this, they are that, and we build up a very strong wall of partition. The middle wall of partition between tribe and tribe. I'm saved. I'm a child of God, but 
look at them that church is still the same deeper life but they are not from our tribe and we erect a very strong wall or partition those people on the other side of the wall you have erected they're saved they're sanctified they're serviceable they're good the people on this side too thank god were saved were sanctified serviceable why do we give more recognition to the people from my tribe than the people who are not my tribe those walls were erecting again they do not show that the prince of peace lives abides in us break down that wall that christ has broken down <laughs> by the grace of God in deeper life from the earlier days and our national overseer here can testify he was with us in Nigeria for quite a long time what many tribes in Nigeria and you might know some of them Yoruba, Igbo, Alsa, Epic, everybody we don't make any difference he saved whatever tribe he comes from whatever others can do that they saved Alsa man, Igbo man, Yoruba man can do come in we are together in the kingdom service of God we don't erect any wall I'm a graduate he is not a graduate he knows the word he has the word he has experienced the peace the purity the power it's not by being a graduate that I preach I preach because of the calling of God he too although he didn't go to university he can come come and preach because we are called all by grace <laughs> For he is our peace, who has broken, who has made both one, and he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. And look at look at number two here. Number two, if they is promoting peace as peace making peaceable citizens among people. We don't do politics in church. We don't do politics in the sanctuary. We are peace with each other. I mean, you become a politician in the church when you are campaigning for yourself or campaigning for your tribe and you are putting all the others down. Is that a church? Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. He has blessed you today. I said he has blessed you today. Are you a peacemaker? Are you a peacemaker? It may go, yes, yes. Blessed are you today. Blessed are you tomorrow. Blessed are you through life in Jesus' name. Now, you see, for anything to change, the change must begin with you. I told you of my friend, we're going to the same church together. I became converted and I left the old church and I came to the gospel church, Bible believing church, and the man was angry. Now, he wasn't born again at that time. He wasn't saved at that time. I was the one that claimed to be saved. The one that claims to be saved is the one to change first. And then, don't worry, he doesn't have the grace now. He's not born again and keep on living that life of the peacemaker. Eventually, that will touch him. Don't criticize. Don't complain. Don't throw stones. Don't campaign. Don't do anything that will show that you're not a peacemaker yourself. Be a child of God. Be a peacemaker. And eventually, all these walls of partition will be broken down fully and forever in Jesus' name. <laughs> Look at number three. 
Number three is partnering with its makers in the covenant of peace. Partner together. Come together. Fellowship together. Encourage one another together. Let the peace of God reign and abide in your heart, in your life. Peacemakers don't criticize. Don't go about criticizing other people. Criticism is showing the evidence of pride. I'm better than him. I'm higher than her. I am greater than them. And they, can, they do not do as I do. They don't live as I live. And they don't act as I act. It's because of that carnal comparison we criticize others. The peace of God abide with you. The grace of God multiply in your life. Blessed are you. Who am I talking to? I said, Blessed are you. The Lord purifies your heart. You will see God on the final day. If you go there before I do, be waiting for me at the gate. I'll soon be there. As we're united here together, we'll be united together in heaven. If I go there before you, I'll be waiting for you at the gate of heaven. Because I child of God, I'm a child of God. Because I follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And you also follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. If I go there before you, I'll be waiting for you at the gate. I'll be there, you'll be there. What are you? You'll be there. What are you? You'll be there. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are you, the peacemakers, for you will be called children of God. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. He loves you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to purify you. He wants to purge you. And he wants to get you ready for heaven. And he wants to make you a peacemaker. The Lord has ministered to us. And we are really going to pray. It is prayer that transfers the message into our hearts to make us clean, to make us pure, to make us holy, to be able to get to heaven. So we are going to pray. Open your mouth as we have listened to the message on the experience of purity and peacefulness in full salvation. Open your mouth and tell the Lord with all seriousness, half salvation will not take you to heaven. It is only full salvation. Open your mouth and say, Lord, this message of full salvation, make it mine. It, it is time to pray. Open your mouth and talk to God in prayer. You need the peace of God. You need the purity of God. You need the power of God to be able to live in this world and go to heaven after your living. You remember the tribes of Reuben. You remember Lord. People who could not. You can't be a peacemaker if you don't have purity of heart. I can't be a peacemaker if I don't have the purity of heart. How can I have this purity of heart? It's only when Christ comes into my heart. How can I have the spirit of heart it's when I am saved, when I have experienced the saving grace, the saving power of God? 
Say, Lord, I want to be a replica of your grace, a replica of your word. I want to have Jesus come into my heart. Make me your child indeed. The Bible says, may I received him, give them power to be sons of God, daughters of God. Say, Lord, I need your power to be the child of God. I need your presence. I need your grace, sufficient grace to be a child of God, to be an expression of your word, to be an expression of your grace. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I believe you want to see God. I want to see God. I do not want to be conformed to the world. I want to be transformed to see God. Our coming to the nation of America will not be a deterrence, will not change you, will not change me. The culture of the land, the culture of where we're coming from, whatever culture it may be, or the culture of the people you interact with, may they not change you. Let the word of God shape on your life. Let the word of God make you who you ought to be. So, Lord, I need the purity of heart so I can see you. I want to be a peacemaker. Let your peace come into my heart. Make me to have the peace of God. Make me to have the presence of God. That brings peace that the world does not even understand. The peace that the world cannot comprehend. A peace that comes in the midst even of storms. The sort of peace that is not troubled in the midst of adversities. Or the peace that is not disrupted by the conflicts around. Say, Lord, I want this peace. I want this peace. It's the peace that is rested in my soul. The peace that brings calmness. That is hope in Christ. And nothing moves. Nothing moves you. Nothing, nothing around, nothing in the society, nothing in your community. The peace that is not disrupted by even the, 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 fought, the fightings of Satan, the roarings of Satan, the arrows of the enemy. Father, in Jesus' name we've prayed. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Father, we want to thank you for such a word, for such a day. Thank you, Father, for everyone that you've used to bless us today. Thank you for the blessings that came to us today. From the beginning of the service, the opening prayers, to the STS, to the praise worship, to the moderation time, and then through the family time, the panelists that you've used to speak, you've used to speak the word of God to us, the moderators, I see also moderated the session, engaging the audience and the panelists so that we can live out the Bible, so that the word of God can become life to us and become substance to comprehend. Father, thank you for our Father in the Lord that you've used to actually cream up, oh God, and consummate the sessions for today, giving us the word, giving us the old time word, the consistent word, the constant word, steadfast word that does not change and doesn't fail. And we're trusting you as we've embraced this word, we are trusting you that we will be consistent we will be constant, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, regardless, regardless of the children, regardless of the family dynamics, regardless of the prosperity that may come, regardless, oh God, of the failure that may even show up in some way tomorrow. We are trusting you will be above only. We will not be beneath in the name of Jesus Christ. We are trusting you that we will be the head and not the tail in Jesus' name. We've come to see that those who follow Christ Jesus are not immune to trials, are not immune to temptations or adversities or challenges. But this is what we know quite sure, quite well, that if you overcame Christ Jesus, you overcame the world the same way we overcome the world, overcome adversities. We'll ride and sail above the storms in the name of Jesus. We know that, Father, that we'll soar like eagles in the name of Jesus. Even your word that tells us to arise and shine is an indication.
or you thinking it could be a vacation time for you, spiritual vacation, your retreat, take your family, travel to Kingston, surrounded by farmlands. Actually, there's a beach. If you go past Kingston, there's a beach there, but don't go to the beach. When you get to Kingston, stop there. After a convention, if you're thinking of going to the beach, you can. That's all your business now. But it's a vacation route. We're going for spiritual vacation, so you know this country can keep you rolling and rolling, never taking time out. You don't want to just keep walking, 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 and when it's time to you want to enjoy, you just drop dead. There's every reason to keep you going, 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 never knowing what America is about, never knowing what state is even North Carolina, never knowing. I met somebody yesterday, an American veteran, soldier, so he's been around the world. He's been to Africa. He's been everywhere. I've seen when you meet Americans that have really traveled wide, they have a very good sense of balance as to how they deal with people. I say he was almost thinking of returning. This is a Caucasian. I think of returning to Africa to go and settle in Africa. He was in Ethiopia. He said, so, he wants to go back to Ethiopia until he got married and said, well, now with children, I think I just stay here. Why am I saying this? If you don't travel, you don't get out of your comfort zone, you will never experience the cycles, the cycles, the cycles of, of the place where you are. When you travel, you meet other people, you meet connections, you meet fellowship, you meet somebody you may not have met before. How many of you have scanners? I'm talking, you're scanning. Keep scanning. Where's your phone? Don't you have phones? Your phone is for counting dollar only. So you got the phone and scan, please. Amen. So we're going to put the same link uh, on our church platform so you can click on it and then you register. Praise the Lord. Finally, everybody say, finally. What is happening August, what? 17th and 18th. What is happening August 17th and 18th? Tell me, what is the theme of that revival? Ah. I said, what is the theme of that revival? Is that how you light up something? I said, what is the theme of that revival? The Bible said, the day of God's power, his people shall be... Now tell me, what is the theme of that revival? Somebody shout, ignite. God is going to ignite this everywhere around here. Like on the day of Pentecost. Fire. Everybody say fire. This is a type of fire that satanic agents, kingdoms of darkness. I want you to understand this. They're not going to be able to stand that fire. 